Well, welcome back to the big board. We're having a look at Phantom Leader Deluxe. And uh, this is kind of a, a random event that occurred in my life. I was over catching up with a friend of mine who has a you know, significant collection of games. And we were talking about uh, the Thud Pilots show on Amazon Prime, which is you know free to watch if you're an Amazon Prime member. And it was kind of a documentary on the F-105 pilots and we're just saying how interesting it was and how brave these guys were and was staggered at the losses that the THUD pilots and in general the, the pilots suffered uh, in the Vietnam War and how the, you know, the uh, tactics of the MVA changed and uh, the you know, Soviet and Chinese support with infrastructure and equipment really really put the technological advantage of the u.s air force and its pilots uh, to the test and in fact uh, there was a comment that i recall from the show talking about how uh, hanoi had the best aerial you know anti-air defenses in the world second only to Moscow. <laughs> so that probably gives you some appreciation for the density and complexity of the, the mission challenges that these pilots face. So whether or not we agree with the war or its causes and its end and whether it was a war or not and all the rest of it, it takes nothing away from the nobility of the pilots' efforts and the stupidity of the political rules of engagement that hamstrung them from uh, firing upon SAM sites as they were being put together. They could only fire on them after they were put together. They couldn't fire on them while they were being moved. All sorts of silliness. Couldn't fire on the MiGs on the ground, but they could fire on them in the air, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, uh, which kind of led us to this conversation about Phantom Leader Deluxe and my friend who has played this game several times said, hey, well, if you want to have, uh, you know, a, a look at the thud, a look at the F-105, uh, here's a great game that might give you a, a feel for it, a feel for what the guys faced. And so, you know, this is, uh, you know, I'm not a huge DVG game fan in general. I've played a handful of their games. And... Uh, as I'll be uh, maybe posting later on uh, an article that I, I'm, I'm pondering about, I've written a couple of thousand words on it at the moment, but talking about abstraction and, and simulation and things like that. And it's always been my assessment that there's a, a lot of abstraction in the DVG games, which is not a bad thing. It just, it's just not something that I, I necessarily enjoy very much. And here... Uh, and and, and the, some of the things that occur in some of the DVG games, to me, sort of lean more towards the absurd versus, and the silly versus uh, an abstraction that makes sense from a from a historical or simulation standpoint, whatever the case might be. So here we are having a look at uh, Phantom Blade of the Deluxe. I've played two missions now, and it's it's a fun game. And it's a fun game because as a solo game, and you all know I have a lot of beefs with solo games as well, but as a solo game, it gives you just enough choices to make you feel like you're making a difference. And there's enough random elements in the game that give it a renewable cycle or you know, an ability to be replayed that you uh, uh, start, you, you attach yourselves to your pilots, you attach yourselves to your planes, and you want to see them succeed, and you want them to do well. And you want them to live, right? Uh, so, so it has that, right? It has that, that attraction to it, and it is highly narrative. There's a lot of great story that if you have the time and the imagination and the writing skill or, or just even just the imagination as you're playing, uh, to me, I like to I like to see what I like to note what's going on in the game and take a picture and then get online and try and find something that approximates that. You know, like you know, is there a, a, a dogfight between a an F four and a Mig seventeen? Great, let's have a look at those pictures and then that kind of kind of uh, 
creates more narrative for me in terms of the story that has uh, been evoked by the game. So, so that's that, right? Uh, it's, so it's a fun game. And let's just, if you don't want to hear any more and you're just curious about what I think, we can stop right here and we can all agree that it's a fun game. And if you like solo games and you like this type of system, then you should probably go get it. Uh, but that said, let's have a look at our AAR, our, um, you know, after action report guidelines and let's talk about the different aspects of the game and see, you know, what, what comes out of that, right? So, you know, the first thing that we usually cover in this is we, we talk about the decision space and clearly we are dealing with a handful of aircraft. You're allocated based on the campaign, a number of aircraft and a number of individuals that will man those aircraft and you know, they will have names, right? vapor so this was <clears throat> I kind of like this was kind of my guy right so he started out as a newbie uh, sorry you can't see that he started out as a newbie and then he uh, went to green and you can eventually become average and then you can become skilled and you can become an, uh, an ace and all this sort of stuff right so there are multiple cars for each individual aircraft and uh, call sign and so, uh, you know, you've got this, this aspect that I really think in terms of who you are, you're the pilot. So you're the squadron commander, if you wish. And your job is to fly out, hit the target, inflict some damage, fly back. Uh, and so that role that you end up uh, uh, filling is, is, pro is probably a squadron commander. But the, the decision space that you've got to hang out in is deciding really who to take, what to equip the guys with that you do take, and what approach you will make. And that's about it in terms of the decision cycles you're gonna make until you get into the actual approach where you perhaps have to decide individually for each aircraft that is flying into an area uh, and we don't need to go into all the metrics here, but if you've got something flying into an area, my screen looks a little fuzzy. Hang on just one sec. Let's see if we can do a little Insta clean. There we go. It looks a little bit better. Uh, you, you, uh, you've got to decide, okay, am I going to uh, ignore the shot that's coming? Do I want to evade? Do I want to try and suppress it? They're the, the three uh, choices you will have. And then you'll fly into the next area and you'll do the same thing again. There's an event card that gets pulled for each area, forward air controllers or whatever the case may be, or nasty things like the rules of engagement. And uh, as you progress in, you'll eventually get to the center area. You'll get to then fight whatever's in the center area if there's anything to fight, if there are any additional units there. And then you'll go through a fairly... It's pretty straightforward once you get through the busyness, but these cards are, are particularly busy, right? So you've got the pilot's name, his skill level, the type of aircraft it is, and you've got these, uh, uh, you know, carrying capacity here is six. You've got this, I think that's the cool factor. His coolness under stress is uh, two. He has two levels of status either okay or shaken and he can accumulate these stress tokens uh, from zero to seven this is a particularly uh, good pilot zero to seven eight to fourteen what speed is he going to be flying at what is his air to air modifier and what is his air to ground modifier when you're rolling the dice higher is better uh, this is a stress token. We put tokens down on the guys and when they reach a level that's going to shake them and that's what's going to drop them from okay to shaken. And obviously that's going to impact their ability to, you know, conduct operations. You've got to pick out the different equipment you're going to use. This is the range. This is the altitude it's used at. This is an air-to-air -air missile. You've got to roll a five or, uh, or more to do a hit. And uh, where's a different item? Here we go. Here's some sort of bomb or whatever, right? Some sort of guided munition, perhaps. Three or less is a miss. Three to five is one. Uh, three to four is one hit. Uh, five through seven is two hits. And eight or more is going to be three hits. 
that's a zero range. So you gotta be on in the area to actually make the hit and make the uh, strike and it's a low altitude piece of equipment. You've got all these target cards, right? There's dozens and dozens of target cards. So if you're playing a big campaign with, you know, maybe it's an 11 day campaign, you're gonna get these uh, points that allow you to buy all sorts of different things over and above the, uh, the equipment. You can buy down their uh, stress level. You can buy up their skill level. You can do all this sort of stuff uh, in, in the context or confines of the of the game with these optional points and you track everyone in uh, all the pilots and the the amount of victory points and experience points they gain in a player log uh, I've got a copy of one here now I don't know if this is the fan made one or not I, I forget uh, I was looking at this uh, and I was just making notes on this so you've got these logs and you you know track all the, the points and all the sort of fun stuff and, so it gets, it gets a, there's a little bit of paperwork involved, which is fine. Uh, so that's, that kind of starts to sort of deal with your uh, objectives and uh, the, the order of battle and things of that nature and how conflict and, and combat are resolved. It's all by area, die roll, and these guys are going to shoot at you. They all have a range. Uh, you know, these guys have a range of two, there's a range of one. So these guys can all uh, fire at you and you can choose to, uh, as I said, evade or suppress them, et cetera, et cetera. So it gets, uh, you know, gets a little bit involved and it gets, actually gets a little crowded in here. So you find yourself kind of shuffling things around a little bit and you've got to, you know, leave room for your cards on the side and a nice uh, little sequence of play here, which is great. And uh, with all that, you would think that it would be a pretty straightforward game to play. And it is fairly simple, but I found the rules to be uh, kind of haphazard and awkward, even though they're laid out in uh, turn sequence order. So that was kind of confusing to me. And uh, the other thing that I've discovered in here in the deluxe edition is that while there's a nice sample, uh, the sample uh, mission disagreed with the way I was reading the rules, so it was unclear as to which was accurate or not. There's a nice listing of all these munitions and things like this for the US, but there are no descriptions of all the different SAM types and aircraft types. And I thought that would have been a nice to have and kind of needed so that you could make choices. The first time you played this game, You'll be sitting here looking at all these information counters and all these missiles and different types and you know their 710 rating, 5710 rating, uh, all these different aircraft, which one should I take? I don't know. What do they do? How do they work? How do I compare one to the other? And it's all kind of, you may as well just basically randomly pull crap out of the box, put it on the map, play the game and see what happens because you have no guidance or no idea as to what will or won't work well until you actually get into it and understand a little bit more about the modifiers for each individual, how stress affects the, 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 fight, the, the fighter pilots and how these event cards can you know, rock your world and stuff like that. So, so that was an interesting little experience and it took me a little bit of time to, to kind of get through that. Uh, they have these campaigns, right? So we can go through uh, short campaigns, medium and long campaigns, and you've got these political uh, uh, tracks and intel tracks and recon tracks that impact your, uh, your each mission that you'll run on. It tells you what weapons you're allowed to use and what special weapons you might have. I, you know, given, given it was my first couple of plays, I don't really worry too much about that. Uh, I'm drinking the first gin and tonic for the season. I'm not a big gin guy, but I did happen to see some Monkey 47 gin that is uh, that I uh, had a friend over from England, Michael Valance, that uh, he was, uh, I believe he was imbibing some of that at one point uh, when I saw him in Seattle. So I thought I'd buy a bottle and uh, here's to you, Mike. Thanks for uh, being a great game player with me in Seattle. We had a lot of fun there. Uh, there's, our, there's our little beverage right there. Right, so 
So where were we? Oh, pilot. So and just just to give you uh, an idea of the scale. So you've got all these cards here. You've got all these counters here, right? Here are all the, here are the rest of the cards for all the different pilots and pilot types and aircraft types and all that sort of stuff. So a lot of cards. That seems to be a pun intended calling card of the DVG games. That uh, it is a card centric game. Uh, company, generally speaking. Right. Logistically, I don't really think there are any logistics here. Historical narrative, huge narrative, how historical it is or accurate it is. Uh, we didn't get to, you know, the point where guys had to jettison equipment, uh, bombs or get shot down. We didn't do any uh, rescues or anything like that. So it's kind of disappointing. I hadn't got that far yet. But I think that's there in the game. You can do these rescue uh, thingies with choppers and stuff, and that's all very cool. They're called SAR operations, basically down pilots, right? And all that's really doing once you recover the guy is uh, you're, it's, it's impacting his uh, stress, stress level uh, unless he goes MIA, in which case he is removed, which would suck. So high replayability obviously very fast playing once i imagine once you kind of got into this game you would be cranking through a full scenario in 20 30 40 minutes if you're not making any notes or anything else and just rolling dice and moving things and and going oh gee lucky me or oh what was me uh I like the components. Like I said, I think I probably would have liked to seen this be a little bit bigger. The counters are great. They're nice and thick and they're well cut and the art is good. They're kind of busy, but you know, that is what it is. There's a lot of data that's got to be shared there. Uh, uh, I said the rules, uh, the rules to me, I don't know that they are perfect. I probably want a different layout but they are once you know your way around the rule book they are well done and the last thing i'll say is there's plenty of action that was one of the things that i was going to include going forward in my uh, observations on games and initial uh, reactions on games is the uh, level of action and activity in the game something is going to be happening every single phase of this game when you're inbound, uh, doing your pre pre flights, there's lots of choices to make, and you know you've got based on your targets that you're given, you're going to choose perhaps different pilots, right? Uh, you're going to go fighting enemy troops and do close air support, or blow bridges, or hit the cement plant, uh, you know, all this sort of fun stuff, right? Great, uh, great narrative building, story centric scenarios very similar to b17 but with more decisions because you're more in charge of what's going on to a certain extent you have but but you know you gotta run the gauntlet you gotta react to what happens uh, with these units they're all laid out randomly picked but based on these cards here so you'll you basically know what you're getting into and how they're uh, and you know that uh, that allows you then to choose you know, a flight path here that uh, you, you, you choose where you're coming in and then you randomly assign these guys uh, areas of fire based on uh, based on a random draw so they can't just fire 360, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, lots of good fun. Uh, an enjoyable, light, entertaining game that gives you a touch and a feel for the the challenges that the, the in particular these uh, F one hundred five pilots may have faced in the past in Vietnam. All right, there you have it, DBG Phantom Leader. Ciao.